Happy 74th Independence Day to all our esteemed speakers and all the attendees to join the session. So, it is cutting off. Yeah, Ashita, your voice is breaking. Uh, okay, we will be You're audible, yeah, but um, it'll break, so it's okay. Okay, I'll, I'll make some adjustments later on. Show the nation skills that is great. We will be connecting interested students to relevant alumni. So stay tuned for the feedback form we'll be putting up towards the end if you want to join in. Your doubts and questions from the speakers will be answered in the Q&A section in the later part of the video. So let's begin with our first speaker, Air Vice Marshal Rakesh Chopra, a 1974 Pilani graduate. He joined the Air Force in 1977 as a maintenance and went on to work on the development of LCA aircraft. I hand it over to you, sir. Good evening, guys. Uh, happy Independence Day. Uh, the host has given me 15 minutes to try and convince you to join the armed forces. Uh, I have no such intentions. What I plan to do in these 15 minutes is to give an autobiographical talk. And given the privilege of hindsight that my age uh, provides me, I will try and give you the whys and whereofs of my associate the Air Force. And if uh, some of you can connect with what I'm speaking, it will be my privilege. Otherwise, take it as one of the more boring lectures that you will sit through during your college tenure. So as the host has told you, I passed out in 1974. Uh, I want to repeat that 1974 to let the timeline sink in. Uh, at that time when I graduated, the, the placement market was about as barren as the landscape outside Pilani town. Uh, but I did manage to find a placement in a multinational company. Uh, Cutler Hammer, they were based in Milwaukee, USA. And I started uh, my career working with the uh, solid state uh, variable speed drives that were used in process industry to tire and speed. So it was fairly uh, cutting edge technology by those days standards of those days. I was uh, a half years uh, through with my job and then somehow I felt that my background in Pilani was interfering with my job. The problem was that uh, I had joined Pilani as a teenager and uh, it was coming from a fairly sheltered background. It was my first experience uh, with freedom. And as one was growing up, one was experiencing the full uh, rainbow or kaleidoscope of emotions that one goes through. So there was love and there was uh, the devastation that normally follows love on a campus. And there was there was fear, there was frustration, there was achievement, there was there was fun, there was spontaneity, and all these emotions. Uh, all these emotions, uh, the failures and the frustrations and the achievements, there was a lot of bonding and camaraderie. And in the sense that uh, we were we were we were bonded well together. We had a, I mean, there was a group of friends that everybody has, for example. And there was a lot of spontaneity and a lot of fun. Now, one and a half years through my job, I realized that all that was missing. We were going through life like zombies or automatons, and we were working, yes. We were logging our 12 hour days. But uh, some of that chatspa, the, the spark, the, the excitement was missing. 
for the life of me i couldn't realize or i couldn't visualize spending my time or my entire career working in an environment like that which gave me very little excitement which gave me very little uh, you know very little thrill to go over so that's how i switched to the armed forces and uh, why the air force well frankly it was that was because uh, when i was a kid i was uh, living in a government colony with thanks to my father and uh, I saw a lot of Air Force officers uh, strutting around in their winter uniform, and they looked very snazzy and very spruced up. So I was attracted. But when I joined the Air Force, I realized that it was a different animal in comparison to the other two uh, branches of the armed forces. For one, uh, at any given point of time, most of our assets were in the air on a daily basis. Because for the simple reason that pilots needed training, they needed to know the aircraft like the back of their hand, and that meant that all the associated paraphernalia, the sensors, and everything had to come on to to, be, to enable the aircraft to fly, to, to enable the pilot to undergo training. And it was only after the pilot was familiar and more than familiar with the aircraft, can could he think of tactics and how to employ those tactics during warfare. So there was. There is a considerable amount of training involved. Demands that aircraft go up in the air every day. So for the maintenance engineer, it was like war every day. I mean, we we were we were literally fighting uh, with our uh, backs to the wall. And one of the reasons for that is because we are a third world country. So we are a third world air force, even though we were like the fourth largest or the fifth largest in the world. We have uh, we have British aircraft, we have French aircraft, we have American aircraft, we have Russian aircraft. We we even have Swiss aircraft. So you can imagine the the mind-boggling inventory issues that arise. You and a lot of these aircraft are uh, obsolete. So keeping them in the air is uh, is an achievement by itself. And the other catch was that uh, unlike a tank, which can you know rolling down some place stop. Or a ship that is sailing can stop somewhere. The aircraft could stop, so the aircraft is a more or less a zero defect syndrome uh, affair, and you have to ensure that what goes up in the air is safe. Otherwise, costs are heavy. So as a result, we are, there were there were a whole lot of issues involved. Aircraft. Being, the whole business of military aviation is a very complex issue because uh, a military aircraft has besides uh, you know the comparison to a commercial aircraft it has a whole sort of uh, whole set of uh, components say about 10000 plus components packed into a very small frame and there are there are five to six independent disciplines of engineering involved i mean there's mechanical engineering there's aerodynamics there is uh, electronics there is instrumentation there is armament technology there is metallurgy you want to go on so that has to be operating in sync and that is what the problem was that the challenge was now as a result what has happened in the air force is that there is a lot of backward integration that the air force has to do to be able to survive as a vibrant organization so as a result you know there is uh, we were doing routine maintenance then we were doing advanced maintenance where we were stripping down an aircraft or we were stripping, stripping down an engine to the bare minimum and checking each and every component of the uh, engine or the aircraft seeing for its specifications and then reworking those kind of things and putting them back again and putting them back into the air so there was there was safety clearances involved so there was and then there were other aspects involved now in order able to keep these kind of aircraft flying you you had to uh, get into development because uh, uh, parts had become obsolete you wanted to optimize op optimize operations so you needed to add on things to the aircraft when you wanted to add on things to the aircraft you had to ensure that they were uh, air airworthy so we were doing development and then because the indigenous uh, industry was taking off and we had the light combat aircraft we were involved in so frankly through my 34 years of uh, career in the air force i touched on all aspects of core engineering whether it was 
uh, maintenance, whether it was production, whether it was development, it was all there, except for marketing, I did everything else. And the, the, the joy and the challenge of uh, doing all this was so high that I used to come back from work full of energy. I mean, as if uh, I, I mean, I hadn't logged a 10 hour or a 12 hour day. And my wife to this day is convinced that I've never done an honest work's job, uh, honest day's job in my life because I never looked tired. So, it, I mean, the, the, the important thing is that uh, if you enjoy what you're doing, whatever you do in your life, if you enjoy what you're doing, you're never going to be tired. And, uh, nobody being going to be able to tell where you are or what you are up to. So the, the, the takeaways from uh, what I was trying to tell you is, one, that when I made the switch from uh, working at an MNC after two years and uh, switched over to the armed forces, there was something in me that told me that I couldn't spend, I can't spend my rest of my life doing this. This, this is way too automated. I mean, it, it lacks spark or it lacks, lacks. And it was the, I mean, the more mature people who are listening to this would tell me that uh, well, that's a fairly childish way of looking at things. But if you, if you want to get the maximum out of life, that is uh, another takeaway. Then never let the child inside you die down. Because the child is the guy who will be happiest at any given point of time. He, he knows how to find happiness. He knows when to dig in his heels. He knows when to howl for at, uh, attention. He, uh, he knows when to walk away quietly from a situation. So the child's in instincts are the best instincts. So never let the child, whatever you do in life, never let the child you die down. And so it was the child in me which decided that no, this is not my calling. This is not what I'm going to do in life. Not an MNC through my life. I am looking for some more excitement in my life. And well, uh, I found it in the Indian Air Force. And uh, the other, so, and the other thing that I wanted to dwell, uh, which I dwelt upon, was that whatever you do, whether you love the keyboard, whether you love coding, or whether you love the outdoors, whether you love the mountains. Do what you enjoy, and you'll never have to work in your life. So at the end of it all, uh, I feel that uh, it is important that you you really enjoy what you do, and I all all of that. And if anybody was to, anybody was to ask me today, whether or ten years after superannuation, if I had joined the Air Force again, and I would very easily turn around and say yes. Because the, the, the excitement and the, the, the journey that I had was, was really tremendous. And one other aspect uh, of the Air Force life, which, which kind of uh, lifted me throughout my 34 years of stay in the Air Force, was the social life that came along with as a package or as a part of the Indian Air Force. And that was the, the it, was, it was almost on a parallel with the hostel life that one led. There was the same sense of bonhomie, there was the same set of, uh, sense of camaraderie, there was the same sense of standing up for each other in difficult situations. Whether as bachelors, where we had the same sense of spontaneity that we had as uh, hostlers uh, when we were living uh, in hostel in Kilani, we had the same sense of spontaneity, or as married people where we were out uh, frequently on duty and they, we were looking out for each other's families, we were standing by each other's thick and thin. So that that sense of security or the, the, the sense of belongingness, which was even uh, greater, I felt most of the time, than what I felt with my own family members, my, my extended family or what have you was something that is uh, an enduring memory of the Indian Air Force, which I carry to and cherish to this day. So these are the aspects which affect uh, the Indian Air Force from a mere job to a very to a way of life, which gave me professional satisfaction, which gave me social satisfaction. And in fact, satisfaction would be a word uh, which would not be fair to all this. It, it uplifted me socially as well as uh, professionally and um, I would uh, 
would love to do that again. But of course, uh, that is my calling, and I took it. Uh, what your calling is, that is for you to decide. But uh, I thought I'd share with you my experiences and uh, hope to touch a chord somewhere. I'm done. Thank you so much, uh, and uh, thank you for listening to me. Over to the host. I Thank hope I didn't sir. take more than fifteen. Uh, not at all, sir. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much, sir. I hope I'm audible, and yeah, yeah. Yeah. so I'm sure you've inspired each one of us <laughs> here. Yeah, and uh, I, it wasn't at all like a lecture. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, next up, uh, we have Colonel. So, graduated from the Pilani campus in 1955 and went on to serve in the army for 28 years. He headed the launch of Ironmar satellite in Siachen and has helped revol revolutionize communication in the army. Colonel Sharma has an experience mentoring officers for defense and his medals in weightlifting and other Another, uh, add another feather in his cap. Post his army career, he was an advisor to the government of Jharkhand in higher edu higher and ed technical education. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Colonel. Uh, I joined the army. Yeah. Yeah. I joined the army Corps of Signals. In the year 77, no looking back, there are three aspects which I want to cover up. Communication, education, sports. Having stated this at the onset, I will tell, I am mentoring to two WhatsApp group. One is basically of IAS. The other one is my pet, that is the defense aspirants. Having stated this, I joined army. Basically, because of my background of athletics, while donning the color of Brits Pilani in the domain of athletics, Kabaddi, and of course, weightlifting. Now, once I joined Army, and I joined Army because I thought that Army joined Karne ke baad, Padlani Padega. Brits, you know. But what happened was happened on contrary. I entered Army only to find that studies are hard, laboratories are replaced by exercise, field exercises, and then the temperature ranging, you have to serve temperature ranging from plus 50 degrees Celsius to minus 50 degree, and even less, minus 66 degree at Dras. No looking back, army gives you on the platter which no other services give. I repeat, no other services offers that much graduation, that much facility, that much bonhomie as the army. And really the army families or the Air Force families or the naval families, they look after each other. Welfare, priority, and of course, responding to the exigencies. Army is nothing. Computers and management, management by crisis. The first technical equipment that comes in the area happens to go to the army. So what bits could teach me, I learned 10 times more while joining the Corps of Signals and doing the entire Indian Army proud by revolutionizing the first launch of around 20 to 21 electronic private automatic branch exchanges. First one was semi-automatic that was imported from Italy, Omni S3 Mark II, and then followed the various oath from the new technology, etc. 21 electronic exchanges in all the class A institution, that is Military College of Telecom Engineering, College of Combat Mao, Infantry School, and of course the Sikandarabad School, etc. In the domain of Komen, uh, not only that, you are supposed to provide security. So the along with the communication, we look after its cyber security, cyber security. And when I joined the corporate in Ernst & Why, 
I know that RSA, the Random Shannon algorithm, came into being, which provides a very, very good and compact security, cyber security. And also, I came to understand what are firewalls, dynamic firewall, etc. Those trouser exchanges where you rotate the dial, etc., etc., gone other days. Army is the most organized and highly computed and electronized. Inventory we have from the pin to, as uh, Air Vice Marshal Rakesh stated, to the helicopter, to the planes. So, this is the inventory. And mind you, the inventory program, I was involved, and my guru was also involved. Guru is again from Bits Pilani, Aditya Bajpai. He was heading the Faculty of Computer Technology at Mao. And we did the inventory management. COBOL, those times COBOL was running, ruling the roost. So in the COBOL, we planned our payslips, and we did this. Having stated this, I landed into Siachit. Tense moments. You touch anything, it crashes. You touch a laptop, it crashes. Unlike civil institution, where you touch boyfriend, hand friend, you, you crash. But what happened was, this Ladakh area taught me, you touch anything, you touch the ground. This was the lesson learned. Then at minus 60 degrees Celsius, where people sitting in peace areas have refrigerated cokes, etc. We used to have boiled cokes. Things are so hard. And a lineman man maintaining around 1500 kilometers of line with all those uh, temperatures and then climbing a ladder. And let us say while regulating a line, the wire hits the eye, the entire eye goes out. So here I did the first technology transfer. We got in in Marsat. These were redundant satellites used by the ships lying in Japan. So under the guidance of Department of Telecom, one member, DGM, went along with us. I headed the team, and we got these uh, in Mars satellites, transferred it to our environment, high frequency from VLF to high frequency, and got it instituted in Ladakh for the first time. And that played dividends during Operation Vijay. So entire border area, high altitude area, remote location, Arunachal, in, in, you name it. It happened, in Mars that happened, and from a post, two hot post, sitting at uh, Siachen, one can speak to his parents in as far as uh, Pandaman Nicobar Island. And this is being done by the army, yet to be followed by the civil ends. We also have the village public telephone scheme coming in into the Department of Telecom. But I was speaking to the travel ministry two, three days ago, and they were surprised, ke how come you landed with these sort of communication in those areas? And now this travel ministry, Ministry of Tribal Affairs, MOTA, they call it, are now adopting the Inmarsat for their betterment in tribal areas, be it Jharkhand, be it Tarunachal, be it Meghalaya, where you have so many tribes, Khasi, Garos, Jantia. The third thing I would like to state here is, I revamped the NCC also. NCC was earlier confined to government schools and colleges, only government. In case private schools and colleges want to adopt NCC, they used to pay their fees, etc. So sitting, I was group commander Meghalaya. Having stated this, we planned a paper for the entire Northeast, seven sisters, Arunachal, Tripura, etc. And that paper, we stated, why only government schools? Why not private schools? Because you'll be able to get a lot of good cream, let us say, in case you have in private schools also. The paper got accepted, and in turn, what happened was the Jammu Kashmir was also included. 1,000 per cadet used to cater for his camps, used to cater for the ANO's pay, etc. And it is now prevalent in the entire Northeast as well as in the Jammu Kashmir, where private and government colleges are given a division or a wing. Not only that, 
मेघालय दी खासी इज अ वेरी टफ आदि साल वेरी आदिवासी इज अ वेरी टफ एंड इफ यू सी द रिपब्लिक डे परेड द नॉर्थ ईस्ट कंटिजेंट इज द फर्स्ट इन कल्चरल लाइट सो वी हैड डेवलप्ड मेघना मेघना इज मेघालय एनसीसी एलुमिनाय एसोसिएशन and most of our cadets of meghalaya are doing well bobby walang is now director of sports and youth affairs in meghalaya there is one mla called uh, bob uh, tybor pathau there is uh, nisa nisa northeast security agency northeast security agency founded by biga so lots of jobs in fact uh, there is wendy sostein she is a major now she is also there so the ncc grooming now in northeast if you see 15th august and 26 january were boycotted so how to make the kids interested into it while analyzing my store i found a para selling kit first i learned it and i had never started ncc with march pass etc i launched cadets two para sale in the air and the moment this news spread the first launching i took my son up the air and then followed by tremendous amount of josh jazba and junoon to the extent the cadets used to tell us ke sir rakesh sharma hamare group commander hain agar inko aapne kuch kiya to hum aapko tilanjali de denge chhod denge we lost us as you in the process ncc first 26 january that we celebrated full fledged regalia and full parade etc uh, and uh, meghalaya governor was handed the bouquet at the starting ceremony by a para girl uh, i remember her name daphne she landed with the para sale and a bouquet and ran to the governor presented that this is how we started ncc in a big and vibrant way and today you name a cadet from northeastern contingent they are very smart they are very active and lots of them have become sportsmen ncc my jawans retired at a very low age 35 40 let me tell you their python programming is better than the best of the civilian graduate i am i am convinced or even cc plus or even cobol and they retire at a very age when their kids are hardly 10 12 15 and no one has seen the college so we spoke to i was in training center at goa we spoke to the director of technical education and we gave him our syllabus and we got the syllabus approved by the director of technical education and today the jawans that pass out are having a degree civilian equivalent degree given to them by the signal records the third thing which i would like to tell everyone army is full of josh jazba and janoon you never grow old at an at an age of 80 years my jawan is still called a jawan he will be not called a buddha as it happens in haryana so you never tend to grow passive firstly you never lack the spirit of doing a thing and thirdly the leadership ingrains which i of course for this i must give credit to pilani i was a student leader chief editor of rachna member of the first senate bit senate in fact rakesh chopra was also there in the bit senate so this gave me the leadership quality which i uh, grew upon which i improved upon in my during my army tenure the last thing i was tell is you see lots of places you and in case you are a sportsman or let us say you are into uh adventure sports you learn a lot you compete a lot a jawan who is a member of the services team gets an officer's ration for his performance there are two my mentees one is subedar major mohanti he is a dronachary award winner second is uh, mohammed kuni he went as coach athletics for olympics asian commonwealth and the world military games i got him as a boy he never used to have clothes and shoes he used to run bare feet and day before yesterday i came to know he is his name has gone to be recommended for the dronachary award 
so we wish him all the best for the core of signals i raised the kabaddi team i raised the athletic team i raised my own team weightlifting and bodybuilding and then the judo team while commanding the six technical training regiment at fonda and sportsmen have done wonders study hard play harder live fullest that should be the dogma once you join the army rather than becoming a multinational kuli which most of us aspire for you must try and do justice to your motherland to your parents to your society to your country having stated this i would also like to tell you we have welfare meetings where the entire family reports to the ceo's lady wife and should there be any a problem with the family or any requirement the relevant problems are addressed by the ladies welfare clubs in short army is the only services army navy air force i'll couple it my daughter is with the air force with the dipac digital image processing advanced center better than what you see in iits and bits and all that we also had a gathering at uh, bits pilani 3 years before and uh, there we came up raksha anusandhan cell and why always i take proud in telling myself that bits is because of us is because nowhere in the globe any university has produced so many officers in my whatsapp group there are total 116 not veterans but veterans as well as serving officers having stated this army is army also ensures that you are not arrested by the stupid police i remember a incident my father was abused by avale of azmer and billy jhamnani was his name i rushed all the way from delhi to azmer thrashed the mla on the streets of azmer and nothing happened nothing happened he apologized so these are the powers that are inherent to you as an army officer air force officer naval officer do justice to your country to yourself if a parent has his son or daughter into the air force his age will be almost one and a half times with this i conclude i'll be taking your question and answers at the end as per the orders from akshita the great and uh, let me once again lay stress upon that that bitchins are the best believe in yourself and you can go anywhere wherever your passion is thank you so much akshita yeah thank you so much sir um so we'll move on to green bimal so graduated in 92 as a civil engineer he broke stereotypes kevin then by joining the army and becoming the 123rd lady officer she served for 7 years and later went on to become a part of the it industry let us hear what ma'am has to say for this part of her life thank you shida and wish you a very happy independence day everyone so starting with 1992 graduation in civil engineering as uh, i'll be very frank guys it was difficult to get a job in civil engineering at that time it was not a very upcoming field uh, but still i joined somewhere as a programmer and when i was looking out for different options i uh, just happened to see an ad uh in employment news and that was related to women special entry scheme in army it was quite fascinating for me i uh, just thought it's a new field and why not try this seeing army uniform the officers in the army in media in movies it was really i mean a very good opportunity i felt and it was true also so uh i mean i i just saw i applied for that and i'll be just taking you through the process of selection which you might not be aware i was not aware so i'll be just explaining what all is usually uh, done when you are selected so 
you apply and then based on the uh, based on the vacancies based on your percentage you are called for ssb i was called for ssb bangalore this place i thought okay nothing to lose i'll get some experience i'll uh, i'll also roam around in bangalore so there is nothing wrong i mean in going there i didn't know anything about army because there is no one in the army in my family or in my close relatives also I got a free train fare free boarding lodging that army gives to everyone whoever is asked to come for ssb and right from uh, the station itself you start getting that army culture is different it's so fascinating as soon as i landed at uh, madras station at that time <clears throat> it was totally like a vip treatment there is a different booth ota booth where you have to submit some documents and then there is a bus dedicated to, which will take you to ssb i entered this is it was quite a large huge area i had not seen that big area i had not seen a cantonment area earlier it was i mean an experience which you usually i mean don't get outside on the first day itself there is a screening process so if you are around 50 so 30 to 40% are uh, i mean uh, uh, rejected on the first day i would say they are not selected on the first day because it might be that they have a very high iq it might be they are little below average so army is not looking for very high iq people also not very aggressive people not highly intellectual people and not below average of course so you don't have to be disappointed if you are not selected on the first day and after the first day uh, there is a four to five days process that is ssb selection process where <clears throat> you are judged on psychological aspects mainly that is the aspect where uh, they focus uh, specifically because they don't need very aggressive people in army then there are group tasks group discussions and impromptu speech and you will be given a topic uh, maybe it's a general kind of i mean you can choose you will be given five topics you can choose any one you can speak for 3 to 5 minutes on that there are group tasks there are individual tasks uh, which you might face as a practical uh, situation in army when you're serving in the army or during the war so how you handle that situation you're judged on that also and on the last day we have an interview with the commanding officer usually by that time after the interview uh, the process is complete you are selected or rejected but then for the final decision there is again you have to appear in front of the committee the whole committee whole selection committee you have to appear in front of them and then after one or two hours you are told whether you selected or not so uh, during uh, the committee i mean it's just the final decision that yes everybody uh, accepts that the person is right he should be in the army or not that's why uh, you are called so it's a un unanimous decision at that time <clears throat> once you selected it is a medical examination process again for 4 to 5 days and let me tell you guys it can be the total washout also even if you are 50 you there can be a case that you are not selected even one one person is not selected again it's not because you are lacking something but it can be because what they are looking for army personnel you are not fit for that so it happens and it happens quite often that no one is selected so out of 50 we were uh, i mean eight so that's a quite high percentage that we were selected at that time after that medical and then you again wait for the merit because uh, when i joined it was uh, just 25 per batch we were taken uh, and nowadays it is around 50 which are taken in one batch so you have to again wait that you are among those 25 so i got the call and then i joined ota again from ota it is uh, you don't know how the day and how the night pass you are so busy for first one month you are a little you feel it's little hectic you are not able to manage but after 4 weeks you start enjoying everything your day starts at 5 o'clock in ota it's difficult because in it you sleep at 5 o'clock in the morning at times so getting up early was again a big problem but again after 2 3 weeks you get used to it because you're so tired you sleep at any time and then you get up early also 5 o'clock you have your pt physical training then drill breakfast then your uh, academics 
lunch, sports, study time, and sleep. And in between, you have your ragdas. You have your uh, uh, your uh, seniors will come, or your platoon commander will come. They will give you kind of punishments if you are breaking some rules. And all these punishments, you start enjoying. You start learning, and you start enjoying. In the first, again, I told four weeks. It's a little difficult because everybody is coming from civil. Uh, background, we are not physically fit. So it becomes a little physically uh, challenging, but otherwise it's a very good exercise, which we learn over the period of time. After uh, after a six uh, months training, that is 24 uh, weeks uh, in during our time, then you are given your sent for bios. And now during your OTA training. You get to learn weapon training, which is again very fascinating. Kind of experience you are uh, learning to uh, fire pistol rifles rocket launchers then you also learn fire drills you are also a part of simulation drills as you uh, you might have to work during wars so and then in between you are also a part of marchings night and day uh, map reading so map reading is also taught that's very important part of army if you are in uh, deserts or if you are in some uh, jungle, then how would you cross? So you have to know map reading. You also have to know map reading with stars. All those are parts of uh, uh, your trainings and you enjoy each and every day there. Yes, in the starting, it's difficult when you're making a, a decision to join army. It's difficult, but let me tell you, you will never regret this decision. I left army because they took so much of time to decide on permanent commission. In our time, it was five years, then they extended by five years. So I took an extension for next five years also. But in those five years, there was a chance that you could leave with a three months notice. So I served for six and a half years and then my daughter was born and then I left it. After that, uh, it was. Uh, <clears throat> uh, it was again, I mean, they were giving till 14 years only, but permanent commission was very recent. Just two, three months back only permanent commission has come. But there were few of my course mates who were part of this. Uh, uh, they were fighting this case and they settled outside, but now they have been called back and they're donning the uniform. They're very happy with this that maybe with a gap also gap of 10, 15 years and then also they are asked and they're called back and they're doing what they wanted to do all their life. When uh, I got my first posting, it was MES military engineering services where we have 70% of people joining from IES in uh, Indian engineering services and 30% were army officers. It was again a very, very uh, good experience, which I always cherish because you're working with such high intellectual class. The kind of uh, opportunities you get in MES. <clears throat> My first posting was in Siliguri. Which was in chief engineer Siliguri zone. So area also I had never heard about, but I came to know that this is in Northeast somewhere start of Northeast, but it falls in West Bengal. So there when I joined after around six, seven months itself, they had bought a new package stat pro, which was very new in the market at that time. So because the funding is never a problem. What I want to say is that funding and learning new technology is not a problem in the army. If you have a wish, you will always get the opportunities. Because we usually when we join army, we feel that it's just running around and it's just saying yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's not that it's not. Yes, sir, because you have to have leadership qualities. If somebody has to say yes, sir, it's not like previous people earlier earlier days when people were not so educated. Now everybody is educated. I'll be coming to the questions later on, so let me complete this. I'll be taking up all your questions. So during silly good itself, I. Uh, got to got the opportunity of one expedition that was mountaineering expedition. So I came to know that uh, army adventure cell is conducting one uh, expedition and where army lady officers and also army wives, they were supposed to be part of that. I did opt for that and uh, it was again a kind of experience which Colonel Ashok, Colonel um, Rakesh also told that uh, I mean, living in those high altitude area, what kind of difficulties, the hardships we face? We don't know. We can't imagine till the time we have been to that place. We were there and few of the girls, they got some problems also because of the high altitude area. How we rescued them, we also got stuck there. 
uh, and if we were there during the night, it would have been a problem. So our coach who was an Everester, he came and he took us down with a rope. It was an experience which I always remember. I always keep telling all my friends, my daughter, that that is the best experience I had in the army. Now, once you take part in some adventure activities, your name goes to the adventure cell. And uh, then you start getting a request or uh, I mean, uh, you are called for different activities, which can be skiing expedition to Antarctica. It can be parasailing can be sailing. One of my friend got a commendation card also because she was part of uh, one uh, Trishna sailing expedition. And then after Siliguri, I was posted to Pune and during Pune, uh, the Skagil war started. So all my course mates, we were around, all were having around two, two and a half years experience. Two of my course mates were also uh, uh, part of this. Actually, many were part, but most of them were victorious, but I lost two of my course mates, Major Savanan and Captain Jintu Gogoi. But we don't forget them. We always remember them. All events, every day, whenever we talk, we talk about them with such great memories of our academy days, how jovial they were, and how, I mean, we can't forget. It's a sacrifice we make. Different kind of high you get when you are, you get these commendation cards, you get these medals. And that's what, like, we are looking for, if you're looking for adventure, you're looking for new technology, you're looking for a discipline in life, you get everything in the army. Again, as Colonel Rakesh also mentioned, that social belongingness. I have been in MNC for around 15 years now. No, I don't belong there. I still feel I belong to Army. I still say, my vehicle is coming. As soon as I see uh, Army vehicle, I say, see, my vehicle is coming. I go to my friends, I go to different areas. Even if one person, one of my course mates is posted there, I make it a point to meet. We always have these get togethers. That is the kind of bond you make with army. Once a foggy, always a foggy. I wouldn't have left it at any cost had uh, the permanent commission come a little earlier. But again, saying, I mean, I don't regret that I joined MNC, uh, but I don't get the kind of social, um, I mean, exposure which I got in army. I was not very social earlier, but army taught me to be social. Army taught me how to make friends, how to uh, be helpful to others, how to improve your network. Whatever Army had taught, I did not learn in uh, bits in four years also. And this was taught in just six months of training. So I always cherish, I always feel that I belong to Army. And the last point is that uh, when we uh, when we go to uh, when you go to OTA, and we feel, we feel that there are few restrictions which are posted on, which are posed on us it can be like how do you eat you're not supposed to eat with hand you're not supposed to eat with only spoon you have to learn to eat with fork and knife i had never held fork and knife in my life but you're taught because that's the uniformity that's the discipline and the discipline only we cherish when we see a marching squad we know that how it looks when everybody is marching with the same pace it looks good it feels good it makes us proud. So army is not only about discipline. It is the whole organization we are representing. And that's why officers have to learn few things which make us army officers, which make us defense officers. We belong to defense and that's why it's unisex defense officer. It can be ladies. It can be uh, men. It is applicable for both. You have to behave in a particular way. At the end, I would say it brings out your personal characteristics, which will help you in all facets of life. You can take your decisions, you're self-reliant. You are not only a good leader, you're also a very good team player. That's what Army teaches us, because every leader was a team player earlier. And once you cross that level, then only you become a leader. So with that, I will end it here. Jai Hind. Thank you, I hand it to you. Thank you so much. Um, so we'll move on to the QA section. So um, I either direct the question to you or uh, you can all answer one by one. So 
next question that uh, the students have asked is how is the transition from an engineering background to something that demands a lot of physical strength? So we can start with uh, AVM Chopra. Yeah, uh, that question is uh, interesting from your point of view. Why? Right? Because uh, I feel uh, as uh, as civilians, maybe we're not paying enough attention to all. Uh, it's, it's, it's not the flavor of the season to look after yourself physically. But let me assure you that at any age, whenever one starts physical activity, the body responds positively. Whether it's at age 20 or whether it's at age 40 or whether it's at age 60 or whether it's at age 70. If your body is in fit shape, I mean, is in uh, okay shape, I'm not fit would be a wrong word to use. If it's in okay shape, the body just takes up uh, whatever it is being exposed to. So when I joined uh, uh, the Air Force and uh, when they start, told me to, you know, run seven laps of uh, a one and a half kilometer ground, uh, otherwise I'd be sent home. It was the only time in my life that I felt I was going to collapse on the ground. That's from where I started. I was, I was really not up to it. I was, I was in bad shape. But during my training, my fitness levels were, I mean, reached to a level that I never imagined. What happens inevitably is that after training, the, there is a steep fall. Because during training, the physical regimen is so high and because we are fit at that point of time, our bodies respond to the physical regimen so well that we adapt to it so well that we become superbly fit. But after we pass out from our training academies, there is a steep fall in the regimen in the sense that you are not required to do so much physical training. And the other aspects of, you know, your uh, profession take over, being engineering or whatever. And that is when the steep fall in physical fitness takes place. I've seen it in all uh, branches of the armed forces. I've seen it in the army, I've seen it in the air force, and I've seen it in the navy. That the physical fitness levels that we achieve during training are rarely met after training, and which I feel is a sad thing because uh, uh, an armed forces officer looks the best when his tummy is inside and he's physically fit. He carries off the uniform that much better. So it's a personal thing. Once you get used to uh, physical activity, the, the training portion of it the, pushes you into that uh, zone where you become physically fit. But after that, it's a personal choice after training whether you want to carry it on with it or not. Thank you. Uh, Rakesh, sir. Uh, Colonel Salmohan. Uh, why, why, why be uh, passed through without any dilemma, without any problem? Is our time dande ke jor pe padhai hoti thi. Is wajah se ham padliye. Pilani aa gaye, pilani bhi achha kiya. Joined army, army bhi dande ke wajah se kam karta hai. And believe me. They are harsh, but what teachers you remember, recollect those teachers who have been very harsh and hard. You recollect and you remember them lifelong. I also remember my school teachers. Study hard, play harder, live fullest. That was the motto which I carried out. Even in bits, I was playing. I was into students' activity and I was also into academics, not that high fi and all that. But Dande ka jo jor hai, Army mein especially, jaise uh, bola tha ma'am ne, Praveen ne, ke you have restrictions in case you have some in discipline activity during drill, during games, etc. Or during di uh, dining meetings. So what happened was, with this fear, and you know your prestige is at stake, and then you mold. Steel ko kaise hum banate hai? Annealing hota hai na? Pani garam karo, sorry, steel ko 1200 degrees Celsius pe heat karo, pani dalo, heat karo, pani dalo. So this annealing takes place in the 
Indian Military Academy, Officers Training Academy. And what about Commander Course? Matt Hera Brahman, Maa Snake Khaate Hain. Now you think, if I didn't eat it, then they wouldn't have qualified me in the Commando Course. But then these are the rigors of the Army life. You have, all of us have gifts. Infinite capacities. Hold up. And who helps us? The instructors or the professors at Military College of Telecom Engineering or the drill masters. If you recollect the IMA photos, after the passing out parade, the first salute is given to our drill instructors. This is my submission. Army mein ek aur kaha hai, jo na kare ram kare ram. Aur isi liye hum wo kar jate hain, jo civilians ya koi bhi police bhi nahi kar paata. Because we have gone through the exigencies. Ankita? Uh, I'm just mentioning transition, but uh, she can still go on. Okay. Uh, okay, regarding the physical training you're saying? Yes, ma'am. Okay, uh, yeah. How you transition <laughs> from the engineering regimen to yeah, the so physical we, training. Ladies, we, will, we know that that time gymming and all was not there in fashion. And uh, of course, we were also not uh, doing any exercise. Usually, we don't do exercise. Nowadays, also, I don't see many ladies doing exercises. The first day when I entered and I had gone to the drill square, uh, maybe because something was not right. So my drill stud, he said, okay, go and touch that uh, tree. I just ran and I felt I'll die <laughs> today. And it was not any distance. Later on, after one month, I found it was hardly any distance. You, I mean, you gradually, you learn and you overcome all that fear. Your stamina also builds and seeing others that such a weak person is able to do, why can't you do? Your friend is able to do, why can't you do? That teamwork really makes you do something which you can't believe. We did, uh, I think, 18 kilometer walk at night. And we all did. We were weak, we were tired, but we all did that. And we still feel like mountaining expedition again. In the starting, I was uh, a little worried that will I be able to reach the climb? Will I be able to ascend this peak or not? But when you see others are doing in a team, you do it. You gradually, I mean, it physical thing is not that much. I mean, I, we feel that it's too much, but we all uh, uh, build it, build that stamina. We don't know our kit, which we come to know in the army. So it's not a big deal, I feel. And if somebody really wants to prepare, just start doing some jogging and all that itself is enough for SSB preparation. Okay, I hope uh, the doubt of whoever has asked this is solved. Uh, so we'll move on to the next question. How is the short service commission program, its pros and cons, and also the options after SS? So uh, we can start with uh, uh, Colonel Shah. Okay, uh, nice question. In fact, these are the worries which very few of us know. Short service commission, as uh, Praveen brought out, initially five years, extramural twice, 10 years, 15 years, and all that. And nowadays, fifth permanent commission. However, all these extensions are based on your confidential reports. And let us say you have the background of Bits Filani or any other thing. You acquire the state of art equipment knowledge while being in the army, be it the Military College of Telecom Engineering or the Vemal's College of Military Engineering, or Military College of Electrical and Mechanical Engineering at Baroda. Having stated this, and also doing courses for your promotion, etc., you are a master of all, be it the account, be it the reconciliation statement, be it the administration, or be it the ERP, or anything, you know, computers, automation, management, e-governance, you name it. So you acquire those traits, which, based on my civil experience, I can say for sure, very few of the professors, including IIT professors, have. And having stated this, let us say you get out of the short service commission. There are vacancies for short service commission into government sectors. You can join IS. Who stops you? 
former Delhi Lieutenant Governor, was a short service commission officer. He, he, was, he was selected for the IS and uh, the Chief Ghost. And yesterday I gave an example of this uh, uh, Chief Secretary Jharkhand, Suraj Bala Verma, short service commission, migrated. She became the secretary of Lalu Prasad Yadav. Then uh, she was Chief Secretary Jharkhand and did wonders. So there are avenues, if, be it ONGC, be it Coal India Limited, any Navratnas, you have vacancy. And believe me, let us say you are a girl, the private airlines, the government of India airlines, Air India and all that, they prefer army officers, they prefer NCC cadets. Very clear. So no, nothing is lost. And you should not feel bad that you are transiting from military to corporate because you are washed iconically. Let us say in forces, you, or even IIT Delhi's, administrative officers are having defense background. Tell me why administration or even the technical domain and particular relationship have a relationship between the management and the employees. So nothing, no worries. And apart and above all, the only thing you miss of the permanent commission is seeing places. I was in Ladakh, I was in Goa, I was in Lucknow, I was in Shillong. But short service commission hardly one or two tenures. So that is the only aspect which you feel. Then the facilities you lack. Army officers on its plate of facilities so that you can utilize this facility. My kids, judo, etc. you name it, through army clubs. And they also acquired a vision which you find, a uh, thing terminology known as uh, uh, BRATS uh, has evolved. And their vision, if you see, is far better than what you see. And because of the army kids, the Kendriya Vidyalayas have done better than the private and public school. This much I can say for sure. As per the rankings of CBSC board, Kendriya Vidyalayas are number one. Kendriya Vidyalaya and even Navodaya Vidyalaya. Chairman or director or someone or engineer, maybe from defense. Navodaya always has a lady officer from defense. This is there. And permanent commission, the best part of permanent commission is the pension. Medical attention, short service commission, of late, during Modi's tenure, they've started a golden handshake. Let us say you complete uh, 10 years, you'll be getting around 20 to 25. Are you complete 15 years, you'll be giving, give, getting around 40 lakh, golden handshake, they call it. And permanent commission, of course, no problem, you have pension. This, in short, is my reply to your question. I hope I have addressed Ankita? Uh, I think Farleen ma'am has experienced and experienced it in real life. So, right. so, yeah, so in my time we had challenges because there was no pension, there was no golden handshake, and uh, only gratuity was given. And gratuity at that time also was around two to three lakhs, which we got after six and a half uh, years. So it was uh, really, I mean, at that time we were very insecure. But the, and if you have to enter into MNCs or corporate world, I was looking for something which was not only administration. So that, that's what, uh, that was the main challenge. Because experience wise, I was in civil engineering and civil engineering experience was also not much because first tenure is gone into administration, second you learn something and third tenure you get some executive post where you can learn something. So uh, that way I was lacking in civil engineering experience and also some technical aspect. So I had to take a break. I had to do some courses and all, and then I entered into SAP. But now when you know there are so many opportunities nowadays compared to what it was in 2001, you can I mean, start learning, start preparing yourself when you are about to leave army. 
uh, and you can also do one IIM course that is for six months. And after that training, after that army training, after, uh, army placement cell, they also help you place in some organizations, MNCs. But if you really want to get into MNC, there is uh, no, I mean, there is no uh, chance that you won't get it. You have to be just prepared. You have to be uh, upskilled. So start preparing yourself before you uh, leave the army. Other than that, you don't get pension. So that's a major drawback in the short service commission. So if you're planning to serve for 10 years, then yes, it's a little helpful because you get a lump sum amount. You can uh, start something or you have some backup. But if you are planning to leave after five years, you have to be prepared for that. Uh, maybe I'm Chopra. Yeah. Well, I guess these guys uh, covered most of the aspects about it. Uh, there is a slight amount of uh, insecurity in that you have to start from scratch again. But like we uh, just covered, uh, most of the guys I have seen have been very much up to it. And, uh, they cope brilliantly. And in fact, job opportunities are much more uh, for uh, short service commission officers than they are. Uh, obviously, leave service at a much later date. So they are a little more out of tune with the technology levels. They are a little more uh, set in their ways. Whereas short service commission officers are leaving earlier and they, are, they can adapt much more easily to the demands of the corporate sector. So uh, uh, it's a, I mean, it depends on what you want to take away from uh, service. It gives you a great way of life. It gives you an exposure. You feel 10 years is more than enough and walk away and uh, set up a business in the corporate sector. You, it's, if you want to enjoy the uh, service uh, as a career, yeah, it's an option. So, I mean, it, both sides are equally good, but I have found that the short service commission is uh, a brilliant way to do things too. Right. It gives you a vision and it makes you so confident. This experience of five years makes you so confident that you can go and talk to anybody and explain anything. So you're not worried about how you're going to face uh, life after this. You're prepared for that. The best part of army. So we'll move on to the next question. So it is how graduating students um, com uh, computer sci science more specifically and uh, that person wants uh, me to consider that uh, uh, does it does the defense services have uh, an IT sector cyber security it doesn't involve all that yeah we can start with you ma'am because you work uh, with the engineering yeah, we service. have Yes, we have a few of the few course EME like electrical and mechanical engineering. They also have computer engineering uh, graduates, which they're taking. Then you have MES uh, Corps of Engineers. So in Corps of Engineers, they take computer science graduates and you're directly working uh, with um, with the IES officers. I said so those options are there, but Again, there, I would say if you really want to get into coding and all, there are options, but you have to find out. You have to be skilled for that. You will get all the opportunities, but you also have to be like prepared for that, that you should be really good in that technology. If you're good, you will be taken care and they will give you all the opportunities. But there are possibilities of to do anything, but if you're just mediocre and you say, I want this, I want that, it's not possible anywhere. Uh, sir, do you want to add anything? I, I, I think I'd like to comment. Uh, the Air Force has a software development institute. It has a unit. Uh, so we uh, are seriously into software projects. And uh, computer science graduates who are any good at uh, what they have done during engineering, uh, get drafted into the software development institute and uh, at various stages of their career have been issued right after training or even uh, during their careers. 
and then now we got uh, cyber security uh, cells set up we got um, because um, every uh, our telecommunication network has become so uh, computer intensive we got uh, software offices uh, posted at all big stations who are actually looking at uh, software issues that come up from time to time debugging and stuff like that uh, on station so there is a whole gamut of uh, software intensive work that is going on so the air force is taking in software engineers and is employing them like i said in a specific institute for coding and software projects as well as uh, across the board in general placement also. uh um uh there are this computer science is enabler of all the branch of all the arms of all the services be it the army navy air force of late there is a jump a cyber command has come up under the direction of under the tutelage now we too have a software development cell at com command headquarters you name a gun which is not without uh, software bofors is entirely microprocessor controlled and these algos these codes etc are by the students of military college of telecom engineering and air force technical college which uh, avm rakesh mentioned so computer science is the heartthrob of any communication system you see rafal electronic warfare advanced electronic warfare chains and then you see the ranon shannon algorithm keys they are from the army infosys has borrowed from the army rsa keys etc there are so many apps which has come up only for the exclusive use of services the entire digital image processing advanced center is automated thank courtesy army engineers army computer engineers and computer engineers everywhere right from infantry to signals to name thing artillery armor ordnance inventory management as i told you is the highest ye sap web to abhi aaya hai but usse pehle hi army started its inventory management including size of shoes we had a problem while developing this inventory kyunki kisi ka size 7 hai kisi ka kisi ka 5 hai how to ingrain into the requirement but then it happened so jaise maine bola से नहीं होता वो आर्मी करके दिखा देती है एंड दैट टू जो ये सॉफ्टवेयर डेवलपमेंट है नाइटी तो वॉज आस्किंग फॉर टू इयर्स दिस सॉफ्टवेयर वॉज डेवलप्ड बाय द आर्मी सॉफ्टवेयर डेवलपमेंट सेंटर एट हेडक्वार्टर्स दिल्ली इन अ मैटर ऑफ सिक्स मंथ्स दे वर आस्किंग फॉर टू करोड्स एंड इट वॉज डन बाय आर्मी इंजीनियर आर्मी कंप्यूटर इंजीनियर विदाउट एनी फाइनेंशियल ऑब्लिगेशन एनी इक्विपमेंट इज ऑटोमेटेड एनी इक्विपमेंट हैज एन एल्गो एनी इक्विपमेंट हैज ए कोड even the cyber warfare when you come across cyber bullying in fact civil area is yet to be there on cyber bullying network we have a cyber bullying cell also and you see the latest even the police headquarters crime branch takes the help of these army cyber experts the culprits etc etc so computers rule the roost in any armed services air force navy army and they have lots of avenues and mind you their coding part their uh, skill sets are so developed because not only they practice in the lab they go for exercises where you have to plant a tropo scatter antenna or anything so don't feel that any arm or including the infantry and night vision devices everything is automated everything the future electronic war will be fought by a world whose army has the control of electromagnetic radiation anti missile missile anti anti missile anti tank all these things are electronically controlled so lots of employability in the army navy air force for the computer engineers ankita sir uh so oh, i'll direct questions to specific speakers now because we have a lot of questions not that so um question for uh, avm chopra so what can be said about the 
Navy as a service branch, how different it is, and does anything in preparation need to be done differently? You know, the, the Navy is another exciting branch. It was uh, of the armed forces. It was uh, a little um, under um, under prepared in the sense that thanks to budget budgetary constraints and stuff like that. Because we have a coastline of about uh, four to five thousand square kilometers, I mean, four to five thousand kilometers. And now that uh, because of the presence of China and its uh, strong navy, things are changing. The, uh, so the navy budgets are going up uh, tremendously. The navy is again a very exciting branch from the engineering point of view because the navy has the best indigenization program of all the three services. I have no hesitation in saying that they uh, they really pick up their uh, they, they drop academic performers and channelize them to a different group. So as a result, excellence is um, is nurtured uh, in a way which is not nurtured in the other two uh, armed uh, branches of the armed forces. The other aspect is so one that the indigenization program is the best. Two, they are getting a lot of uh, budgetary favor now. So, as far as their uh, future programs is concerned, is really brilliant. I mean, they are way ahead. The the aspect as far as uh, preparation for the navy is concerned, it, it's not very different because. Uh, uh, all the three armed branches, all the three armed forces take care of intensive in house training. In house training marks, uh, because, uh, the model is such that we, uh, we take civilians uh, from the streets and then we, we convert them into uh, whatever the, our needs are. So, the uh, submariners, for example, are the most, uh, most, it's the most difficult branch to, I mean, part of the Navy to be working in. But all these uh, uh, these aspects are taken care of within within the navy. The, the the flip side of the argument is that in the most seafaring nations, for example, in Britain, which has the strongest navy, the uh, the ship a ship sails for about thirty percent of its lifespan. Seventy percent it is in the dock. Same is true for the. Uh, I mean, uh, a lot less is true about uh, for the uh, Indian Navy in the sense that actual sailing, actual uh, uh, you know, uh, actual on sea preparedness, it comes uh, down. But now with the changing environment, I am sure that too is going to pick up. So it is yes, it is an exciting service to be a part of. Uh, in no way, uh, I mean, I would think that. Uh, it's going to the navy is going to expand in ways that the army or the air force may not in the future. Thanks. Thank you, sir. So uh, next, uh, I have a question for uh, Major Parveen. Uh, can a candidate who is training in OPA join Para SF, or only those who have trained in IMA are eligible to join Para SF? And in what oh, terms? Okay. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. It's uh, yeah. Anybody can join. Even uh, the ladies I've seen, they were also part of parasailing force. Uh, but if you say, I mean, it, it, uh, they would always prefer this somebody who's a permanent commission who can serve for a longer time. But you can go and get the training, and later on, if you get a permanent commission, of course, you can always shift. So there's no, yeah, restriction based on your short service or permanent commission. Do you want to add anything, Colonel uh, Sharma? Colonel Sharma? Yeah. Hello? Yes, sir. Ah, there have been girls in the para SF forces, which is Maroon, we call it. And uh, it is no one singles domain. All can go. People go to ordinances who don the Maroon Mere. There are people from Signals who don the mar maroon beret. Not only men, but the girls also. So nothing big about it. Only thing that training requires extra drilling, doing commando and doing the para flights. 
That's all. Um, the next question, um, Colonel Sh uh, Sharma covered it in his speech, but uh, uh, you can uh, I want him to elaborate on it. Any daily routine that is recommended for aspirants to physically prepare themselves for SSB while studying in college? Um. Maybe sir can cover this by the time. Yeah, can Rakesh oh, yes, join? Yeah. Sir, would you like to take up this question? It's fine. Anybody can because I think the uh, uh, very minimal preparation is required. All you got, if you want to uh, actually get into this business of fitness, all you have to do is jogging. Just increase your lung power to the. Uh, best of uh, your ability and the rest uh, the services will take care of yeah you don't need to panic uh, for ssb uh, bare minimum is required and now that there are coaching institutes that have been set up in the city streets which uh, help you to train for the ssb yeah and you are uh, just i mean um, you have to do a running you have to do a long jump high jump and other than that, there are very small uh, trainings during SSP. So basically, the bottom line is a uh, very minimal amount of physical uh, fitness is required. Just a little bit of jogging on a daily basis will prepare you well enough. OK. Uh yeah, so it's back. Uh, should uh, I have a question for you? Uh, yes, please do. I don't know uh -huh. how it locked. Yeah, it's okay. So, um, any daily routine that is recommended for aspirants to physically prepare themselves for SSB while starting in college? Yeah, yeah. Uh, very thing. They must indulge in sports, number one. Number two, as I say to my WhatsApp group people, Daily have a run of at least two meters and 50 abdomens. That is all, as Praveen brought out, is required for preparing for the SSB. That is all. Rest, the Indian Military Academy, the Officers Training Academy, the Air Force Academy at Dindigul will take care of. They'll make you physically the most fit man on earth. Um. So the, 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 there's a question that has been highly asked because most of us were at specs uh, and it's for okay. Avian Chopra. So uh, it is that uh, if we have we don't have an eyesight of six by six, can we still join? Yes, you can join. The power allowed is plus minus three point five diopters. Number one. Number two. Let us say you have a spec and you want to join Air Force as a pilot. You can do that also. Provided you undergone this FACO operation at least six months before the SSB. Sir, Rakesh, sir. Yeah, yeah, you're spot on. Thank you. Yeah, so specs is not entrance. My ghostmates were also wearing at the time. But yeah, okay. during training, I mean, you have to just get rid of specs and you have to wear the lenses. That's it. Lens. Uh, that might, uh, that must be reassured a lot of people. Um, so, uh, I have a question. So, which career option would be a better choice, IAS or IFS, IF, I, the services, or the Army Air Force? And uh, also, how to get into IAS after SSC? Uh, we can start with you, ma'am. So one of my friend uh, after SSC, she is an IS officer now. Uh, but I'm not sure if there is any reservation. Uh, correct me if wrong, sir. 
Mr. Rakesh, because earlier there was a reservation in IAS, but now I think there is a reservation right. only in short service uh, in uh, that SSE board. Uh, we have something else. Ah, Praveen, it is still there. Uh, the uh, so, uh, IAS officers as well as okay. for short service commission officer is there. And there is an age embargo also ah, around 45 or something. Yes, age relaxation is there, that I'm sure. But other than ah. that, also there. Still one of my yeah, one of my friend is already there. She is an IAS officer. Uh, and yeah, what was the other question? After yeah. SSC? Which is better, IAS? Yeah, which is better, IAS, or IAS those things or Army Air Force? Because it's government in the end. Uh, it's your choice, experience-wise. I think it's always Army, Navy, Defense Forces. And if you have other aspirations, uh, then I mean, you have to decide. You are the best judge. No, smartness and uh, boredom happens to yeah. IAS. <laughs> you know, the condition of IAS is Likter House, Sir Zukagar, Son of Saroki Galia. Exactly. Yes. Sakengi, Akko, Do Rotia, Garwalia. And the politicians. And you have to bear with those politicians. Yes, so yes. if you can handle that, then yes, <laughs> it's all your uh, decision. The glamour, of course, you know, shining stars are in Army, Navy and Air Force. They are not in IAS or even in IES. Okay, so um, we'll move on. So uh, Indian military hardware is affected by a significant amount of obsolescence mostly due to budget restriction. How can we civilians contribute in addressing this issue? Very nice start with Colonel Chopra, uh, Colonel Sharma, sorry. Okay, very, very nice, interesting question. Only thing, three, four days before, Defense Minister has promulgated a list of 143 items in which he has given deadline. By December 20 is the first deadline, around 60 of the products will be Atmanirbhar by Indians themselves. Then again next year 21 and by 23 everything should be Indianized. That is what there. However, private players at, as Praveen must have uh, experienced, they are already there in the Army Navy Air Force. Let us see you buy an electronic exchange in my time or in your time or at the moment also. You look for Oki which is from Japan. You look again, look from Crompton and Greaves, which is from US. And then we have a qualitative requirement established by the headquarters. We test those equipment by the uh, qualitative requirement. We carried out the field trials and then we finally approve or disapprove. The approval and disapproval are at the Ministry of Defense level and which are higher than the bonuses constituted to look into the uh, qualitative requirement of the defense equipment. So hardware and most of our foreign exchange goes into hardware procurement for the defense. They are very costly also. As such, forex reserves come down. So this is a great step and already private players like drones, uh, Bits, Piladi, I think it is Hyderabad, has put up a suggestion in the Raksha Anusandhan cell of Bits to come up with a flying uh, platform for observation post for the Indian Army in the border areas, nice topic, or for that matter, cyber security, electronic, you see the amount of electronic equipment in Rafal. The cost has gone up because there are so many foreign things involved in it, duties, etc. We can, in much less than what abroad people produce, the latest in the space station, if you've seen the uh, lightest equipment we rendered compared to US, etc., and at a very, low cost. This is the prowess of Army, Navy, Air Force engineers and they are capable. So if the partnership happens, which is already started, if the partnership happens between the private players and the Army, there will be one or two black sheep, but 99.0% will be good for Indian Army, Navy, Air Force. Because what happens in Russia ground, in Ladakh ground, it is entirely different. Less of oxygen, people coupled with hapo, hado, so many travails happen. So these things, when on the ground, if we do it, make it, we'll be far, far having an edge. And not only that, we'll be exporting this Indian-made equipment to the other country. 
So I believe it is just a matter of time and already private players are eyeing for defense hardware. So nothing to worry. India has come up this big. It will be still bigger. That is all what I want to say. Rakesh, sir. No, I think you've covered it graphically enough. It's early days yet. Uh, I mean, it's too big a question to be able to answer within this time frame because there are too many. Um, we've gone down this road for quite some time. And, uh, there's another attempt by the government. But uh, there are issues involved. So, but yes, we moved forward from where we were. Uh, and I'm sure that as we go down the road, we'll be opening more and more to the uh, country's uh, technological uh, prowess and uh, getting more and more of our needs fulfilled uh, through our uh, country's technological prowess. The capabilities are there, there have been issues. and. Uh, Uh, I can't hear. Is it only for me? Uh, no, I can't hear it either. You okay. Uh, uh, so uh, you're we, not we proceed to the next, uh, next question. Yeah, yeah, I want to the next question. So, officers are more administrative um, they're more on the administrative side than technical by administrative in a manager type is it true uh, the person interested in that technical side so he wants he just wants to clear it up so there's another more score i think clear on the right but we Angita, should I answer? Oh, yeah. I, I thought you would answer. Yeah, yes. Sir. Achha, achha. Yes, okay, sir. okay. So I'll take on. Uh, yes, there is nothing like it. Okay, army, lots of administration. You, even the vice chancellor job is not that academically big. Army is not only administration, it is also engineering. And these days, Battles are fought on your engineering capabilities. How come Indian Army has been able to repulse the Galwan forces of China is because of the sheer strength, not only of physical, but the satellite imagery that we were getting to know about the Chinese movement. And we were prepared for it. So you cannot say that Army is only admin, uh, majored or at, uh, technically minded. It has balance of both, and it has capabilities of taking on the best available in the country. Electronic warfare, if you've been from Bits Pilani, you've been, uh, you ask any IIT chef whether he has seen the technical equipment of the Army, Navy, Air Force. We have uh, maneuvered in signals. We learned how to plant an antenna. Guy wires ko hum log adjust karna seekhe hai which uh, in uh, yeah, bits pilani or iits they don't teach mask ko kaise haath se hathode se tok tok na that is administration lekin guy wire or antenna ko uh, dushman ke area mein minimum lobe ke hisab se focus karna has been a forte so that electromagnetic radiation don't spill over to the enemy side this is the technical prowess of the army free for all nahi hai ours is a demonstrated capability of engineering and enemy is uh, shit scared of the might technical might of the uh, Indian Army Navy Air Force. So nothing to worry on that. And of course, admin wise also we are better than the best of MBAs. After all, Army has been responsible for the evolution of computers as well as management. 
So there you are. So nothing to worry. Army is equally capable in both the domains. Thank you. And with this, we need more technical people nowadays, actually. Because we want to be self-reliant. We don't want to depend on other countries to provide us vehicles. So we need more technical people. We need more BITSians. We need more IITians in armed forces. Uh, uh, is KVM so back with us? Yeah, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, yes, sir. So you're all. So, uh, uh, yeah. What's the question? So it's specifically for you. With your vast experience in HAL and development of LCA, how easy, difficult do you think it is for entrepreneurship in defense sector? And how does someone who aims to create defense equipment for India proceed in their journey? Well, that's a, uh, that's a fairly um, long-winded question because uh, uh, it's a Uh, we have been very slow to open up to the indigenous abilities, capabilities that we have. Like I mentioned earlier, we we just about starting to realize that uh, we can do much more. the The process has been slow till now. There is no doubt about it. We have preferred uh, the foreign vendors, uh, and things that. They are threatening to change. They have threatened to change for quite some time. They are threatening to change again. Uh, it's not. Uh, I I will not paint a rosy picture. I, I'm. I'll be factual with you. It's not an easy. easy to Promising that it will become easier. So uh, maybe it will. The HL, for example, has now started outsourcing uh, some of its uh, sub-assemblies to local vendors. The LC, of course, is a classic example of uh, how they took on board about uh, you know, 14 universities and about 130 labs to be able to come together, to bring them together to uh, the LCA platform to utilize expertise. Frankly, any other country, the uh, the the project head of the LCA would have been Bharat Ratna, but I guess he, here he is lost somewhere in obscurity. So the LCA, uh, my mind, it has been uh, very negatively written about in the media, but uh, to my mind, it shows uh, that from a plain piece of paper, how we were able to build a fourth generation plus. At the moment, it is one of the best uh, in its class in the world. So it's possible. I think not enough has been done. An effort is being made by the government to go down that road. And I am sure that uh, as we go down, more and more avenues will open. Things will become than they were for uh, local entrepreneurs. But uh, I would love to, you know, answer this question on more a uh, one-to-one basis because it uh, con contains a lot of aspects which cannot be gone through now for a positive time. But rest in short, it will open up uh, down the road, I'm sure. Ashita. We try to connect, with the, uh, connect you with the people who actually... Uh, um, so, uh, we'll have the last question now. We'll take it up. So, majority of Bitsians take up MNC jobs, which provide them with a luxurious life. So, what makes you develop that motive to entirely serve the nation and many times have to stay away from your family? So, um, we can start with uh, Colonel Sharma. Okay, what luxury life you are talking in the time of domain no, of COVID? <laughs> Forget it. There is no such thing as luxury life. Even in luxury life, you have to work hard for, for fetching those things, those luxuries which you require. And every luxury requires vitamin money. So Army, Navy, Air Force, gone are the days when it was having shortage of salary, etc. Today, believe me, what pension I am getting 
a startup guy will not be able to get it in another four five years not all of us are destined to be pichayas also remember this but then in private and in in government navratnas lots of people may have acquired the luxuries in a wrong way that also kindly remember this and those who have acquired by the prowess of their grey will surely do well in life because that is a hard effort of acquiring those luxuries in army navy air force we are helped to acquire these luxuries by virtue of our training what luxury you want let me tell you you want medical comforts army provides the best you want pension army gives you on plate and plethora of pension act free rations an officer is entitled to around a ration which is equally good for four members in a family this is what we get then two months of paid leave people from infosys are on covid leave and they are working more than they used to work in infosys days so you can imagine the amount you go in army for two months paid annual leave ladies of course they have their own entitlement of more leaves and of course 20 days casual leave what else does one acquire then you come to know you come to see places which multinational can ill afford i would also like to add something sir after you finish okay, please 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 i finished yeah so okay mncs what are you worried about you are always living in insecurity of losing your job that's why you're putting in how many hours of work minimum 10 to 12 minimum you're always worried about emis of loans in army we don't worry about that the house is secure you are given a house you are given a uh, to and fro fare you are given all the luxuries of life which you can't afford outside is it a fact or not i'm asking everyone you must have seen also and i have seen both the lives in army 5 years i was getting a full fledged house with lawn in front and backyard and here i'm just paying my emis for a 3 bhk which i just completed let me tell you so luxuries we get only in army luxuries we talk about pay packages outside and we don't talk about pay packages how much you are getting or uh, how many on site opportunities you are getting we don't talk about all these things in army we talk about where are you getting posted next okay i'll come and meet you that kind of that is the luxury for me wherever you are going you have you know you are you'll be taken care of for 5 days 7 days you you can visit all the places all around india i've seen so many places after joining army that i had not gone out of this area like pilani and ghaziabad and delhi but now i've seen i've i've gone to so many places abroad also then adventure activities again you are on paid leave even if you are participating in those activities you are paid what else do you want if you see the comparison you will come to know that here that pay package is just a off nothing else or ankita one more thing i would like to add here is having grouped from the army you can command a better pay package compared to the normal civilians i was heading the pmu of ans and young and the package i was getting was kind courtesy the army grooming only so you have a relation short service mein you are groomed but then you manage you become the chief secretary of jharkhand you become the secretary of lalu prasad yadav so acquiring uh, grooming from the army you tend to do more good in the civil parlance or in the corporates or in the navratnas you see khelo india movement entire things are managed by uh, army personnel entire sports managed by army personnel and believe me delhi aap government during this covid time and for the improvement of education what they have done is they have employed ex servicemen i was speaking to iit delhi i told him that you employ there is a crisis in higher education and there's a very thing i spoke to bits pilari vice chancellor why not employ army officers who do justice to the higher education why not we are not shy of doing practicals not cut and paste 
and we are also researching without any uh, software, without anything, right from the scratch. No plagiarism. Can you imagine the amount of patents developed by DRDO are far, far better than the grant given to each IT of 5 crores for uh, developing of patent, etc. How many patents are DRDO has developed? How many? Even, not even one-tenth IITs could develop. Well, I've been researching into it and I've told it openly. Rakesh sir knows about it. For the last 18 years, there have been not a single guy from IIT who joined the defense. And government of India is wasting per student 10 lakhs for his grooming. And we want the brain out to be drained out. And these IITians, what they do? They become multinational police. In this respect, I will get great bits Pilani the best. Sir. Yeah, the question that he asked that was asked for different, I think, in the sense that uh, they still all said and done what what the question was, if Ashita can bear me out, was why are I mean, why is it preferable to go down the MNC route rather than to the armed forces route? Is that the question? Ashita? Um, I'm not sure. It's basically what makes you develop that motivation to serve the nation instead of just uh, you see, so, dollars. Outside. So, sir, it is no, it why do you want to go can the I, army way rather than the MNC? Can I continue, Praveen? Can I continue? Yes, yes, sure. Yes. Uh, the, the point is not about serving the nation. The point is about what you want out of life. Uh, I mean, are you looking for a way of life? The armed forces is a way of life. It's it's not you, you can't uh, you know measure it in terms of uh, rupees or you know comfort or whatever. It's a way of life. It gives you a sense of belonging. You a sense of comfort. It gives you a sense of adventure. It gives you. A, it's a whole pack. It's a way of life, and it gives you. I mean, it gives you deferred wages in the form of pension. Now you can't sort of you know compare that with what the MNC gives you. It's a giving you a lot of things. Giving you a lot of answers also. I mean, uh, it can give you a lot of health issues also. So it's it's very difficult to use. Uh, it's not a zero sum game. You can't you know uh, say uh, it's not a binary. It's either zero or one. You've got to look at it. There are uh, it's what you're looking for in life. Are you looking for a way of life which is which is wholesome? That's what the armed forces. Is. It, it gives you a way of life. It gives you a wholesome way of life. You may not appreciate it. You may appreciate it. That depends on your personal makeup. But there are ways of looking at. The armed forces way of life, which is great, and there are ways of looking at uh, the MNC way of life. I think that is great. It's up to you to choose. But we've kind of been trying to dwell on what the armed forces way of life is and how good it is. That's that's, that's about it. And Ashita, the motivation comes during the training. When you see there are people who can be in danger because of you, you don't want to sacrifice them. So that that is the training is all about. You can't keep on thinking I'm joining AMD because I want to sacrifice. No, that is a condition which comes to you during your training. So when you're joining, you're not thinking that I'll be just uh, sacrificed tomorrow or I'll die tomorrow. You're not thinking about death at all. Only when circumstances come, you want to save your nation, you want to save your people. And that's why if you're sacrificed, it's OK. That's the way of life. It comes on its own. It's the training. Thank you so much. So, um, this we come an end of our bits to defense talk. Thank you so much, Colonel Sharma, AVM Chopra, and Major Parveen for sharing your knowledge with us all. And thank you all for attending this session, which is way different from our conventional bits to talks. Uh, we hope that in the near future you see an opportunity in this field instead of joining, instead of going down the MNC road. Um, as a part of our alumni mentorship program, we will be connecting interested students to relevant alumni. 
please fill up the feedback form that we we have put up in the chat box if you want to join in each suggestion is also very valuable to us good night and all the best all right ankita thank you thank you it was a pleasure yeah joining here